Dr. Bandy Lee, a medical doctor, a forensic psychiatrist, a violence expert, president of the World Mental Health Coalition, editor of the book, The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump, and most recently, the author of a new book, Profile of a Nation, Trump's Mind, America's Soul. Uh, you can uh, follow uh, Dr. Lee over on uh, uh, Twitter or whatever you call it these days, uh, Bandy X Lee number one. And also, uh, uh, Dr. Lee has a, a great Substack column that's really worth subscribing to. You can sign up for free. Uh, just go to Bandy X Lee, B A N D Y X L E E dot Substack dot com, or just you know go to Substack dot com and plug in Bandy Lee, and it'll pop right up. Dr. Lee, welcome back to the program. You've been You've been writing and talking about, you know, Donald Trump and his threats and his psychology for a long, long time and, and, and you know, how the APA went after you. And I want to get into that. But most recently, Donald Trump is, is now uh, talking about bloodbaths and Jews, uh, kind of in the, in the, uh, not quite in the same sentence, but um, in ways that are bringing back some really scary echoes. What, what are your thoughts on this? Yes, absolutely. Thank you for having me back. And Tom, I've been quite enjoying your substacks as well. Well, thank you. Um, yes, we've been warning against the psychological dangers of Donald Trump since ever since he won the first presidency. And uh, what we had been warning against, that his psychological dangers would translate into social, cultural, civic, and geopolitical dangers over time if he were not properly contained, uh, has now come to pass. And uh, as you know, just a few days ago, he was uh, planning and fomenting um, an incitement of his followers once again through very violent rhetoric that many would recognize from very perilous times in history. But what I recognize is the psychological disposition of a very dangerous individual who uh, is capable of uh, assembling and uh, has the emotional need to gather around him uh, a private army of his own uh, gathered by his psychological contagion. Can you speak to psychological contagion? Because America just seems, you know, I, I, I've been doing this program for 21 years. And the first 15 years of the program, one of the kind of hallmarks of this show was that I regularly had Republicans on and, and I debated them, conservatives, libertarians. I mean, you know, it's, um, and, and, and some of them, uh, people who are fairly high profile now and some of them who are fairly kind of crazy right now. And now they won't come on anymore. Since Trump, basically, nobody wants to come on and have a conversation and the few who will, uh, you know, it turns into a shouting match. Everybody's trying to imitate Fox News. It's like. America has changed since Donald Trump came down that escalator in 2015. How does that happen? Yes. One of the reasons why uh, I and a bunch of my colleagues felt that we had a responsibility to warn and inform the public was because we saw uh, Donald Trump, someone with uh, severe psychological symptoms and mental impairment in such an important office as uh, the office of the presidency, was actually a public health threat, and in fact, a public health emergency, um, which was why I held my conference right away uh, at the Yale School of Medicine, where I was faculty at the time, and we came out with our first book, The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump, 27 Psychiatrists and Mental Health Experts Assess a President, emphasizing his danger to public health. Now, danger is different from diagnosis, uh, and it is our societal duty. And uh, at that time, we, uh, there was a, an instant, unexpected bestseller. Macmillan, one of the big five publishers, took five weeks to catch up with the demand. And uh, we met with uh, over 50 Congress members at their invita invitation. And uh, lawmakers at the time were depending greatly on our educating the public medically so that they could act politically. This is what they told us. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, at the time, uh, the American Psychiatric Association, which is federally funded and which I resigned from because of their pharmaceutical industry connections, intervened and blocked us out of the media. And so what we have today is what we were very concerned would happen. 
Uh, in other words, if these severe symptoms in such an important influential office were not contained, then eventually we would see uh, the spread of symptoms through the through the entire population to the point where we can't agree on facts anymore. We can't discuss ideas. Uh, facts and evidence don't matter. And this is what we see when there is a, a spread of symptoms from uh, which is closer to mental pathology than rational decision making. So it's no, not surprising you're not able to hold rational conversations. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's remarkable. Uh, uh, Peter Navarro, for example, I mean, we, actually we had him on the program a couple of weeks ago. Um, or maybe a, a, a month or two ago, because he used to come on regularly. He was an economist. Um, we shared, I mean, a Hamiltonian uh, economist, you know, the uh, manufacturing should be the primary business of America kind of thing. And he was just a rational, decent guy. And then he hooked up with Donald Trump and he went insane. He just went insane. And the last time he came on the show, he was just, he was sputtering. I mean, it was, it was like, I thought I knew this guy. I mean, he'd, he'd probably been on the program a dozen times in the past, you know, 15 years um, before Trump. And uh, uh, Stephen Moore, you know, of the Heritage Foundation, uh, he used to come on and debate me all the time. And now he's, I mean, these guys, have, they've just like, they've, they've stepped into another world. It, it, it's, I, I just, I, I, I'm, and, and you have warned about this for some time and the APA going after you, I think it's just, you know, was, it was shocking, frankly, to me. And I'm, 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 I'm so glad that you have been fighting back and pointing it out. And, and again, I want to plug your, your Substack newsletter because it's such an important one. Just, you know, go to Substack.com and, and plug in Bandy Lee or, uh, of course, it's BandyXLee.Substack.com. Um, in, in your most recent book, the, your new book, um, profile of a nation, Trump's mind, America's soul. Um, in your last Substack article, you, you, you mentioned that people have asked you, what do you mean by America's soul? So let me ask you that question. Well, I think we've come to the point where uh, we're at an existential place uh, with respect to whether or not we will be able to address this, what I've sometimes called a mental health pandemic, um, whether we'll be able to bring the, the, the relevant, correct knowledge and to educate ourselves in a way that we can empower ourselves to meet the, uh, the issue of our time. Because, uh, of course, voting is important and uh, political discourse is important, but there's a certain level of mental health and mental capacity that is a requirement for politics and certainly democracy to happen. And we're in, we're in a perilous place where that is being threatened. Uh, and of course, the, the phenomenon you described is something that, that I've commonly observed as a, a psychiatrist who's worked in the public sector. I've uh, worked with violent offenders in prison settings and in uh, state hospital settings where individuals often go untreated for a very long time. And uh, what we see is that it's not the healthy individuals who um, correct those with severe symptoms, but the severe symptoms that spread to previously healthy individuals, such that after a while, after continued exposure, uh, you almost cannot tell the difference between the person with the primary illness and those who secondarily uh, acquired those symptoms. Mm -hmm. The only way you can tell is by uh, obtaining a detailed history. And what we do in prison settings or uh, in the uh, in hospital settings is we we separate these individuals. We either hospitalize the primary uh, person or uh, separate them in different cell blocks, and the symptoms in the secondary individuals dissipate. Mm. But this is what we have not been able to do. There was a momentary um, period when that had occurred, when, uh, right after the January 6th insurrection. Donald Trump was removed from all those significant social media platforms. And we saw a lot of denunciations. We saw a lot of people coming around, in a sense, being woken up from the spell that Donald Trump had had uh, uh, them under. But uh, as he gradually moved back into the public sphere, uh, we saw how dramatically that shifted from being 
uh, correctly a, a, a riotous insurrection to now um, uh, people who are politically pros uh, persecuted and hostages mm -hmm. and unbelievable patriots, as, as Donald Trump was saying before he went into his bloodbath speech. Yeah. But uh, this, this uh, uh, normalization of violent rhetoric is, has been one of the one of the influences, and that that makes it very dangerous as we go and we'll go more deeply into this campaign season when he will be more and more exposed to the public. Dr. Lee, we, we, we just have about uh, about a minute before we're going to hit a hard break that I can't control. But what what best how best can we speak to people who might be wavering or who might be being influenced by Trump to help pull them back from the edge? Yes, uh, I think engaging them in discussions is important. Uh, there, there are, of course, many individuals who are a bit far gone that we can no longer hold um, conversations with. Uh, that would be a more fundamental change in society, uh, going back to socioeconomic um, uh, disparities. But as for those who are still wavering, engaging them in discussions and bringing back norms and standards. In other words, even if we had more mental health discussions in the public sphere, where mental health issues have become, as I said, the, and from my point of view, the number one factor determining this, this election season, because it's so much at, at the fore, uh, because one of the candidates is so severely mentally impaired, um, that uh, that bringing back norms and standards, bringing back memories of how uh, discussions were possible with shared facts, mm -hmm. and um, and bringing back uh, a focus on why what is happening is kind happening. Kind of remind them of the good times. Dr. Lee, it's always illuminating speaking with you. Thank you so much for dropping by today. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. And check out Dr. Lee's uh, substack, bandyxlee.substack.com. This is the Tom Hartman Program. It's six, it's, a, it's eight, 18 minutes past the hour. We'll be right back with more of the news of the day and your calls in just a